All right, so here is the second part of this video. Um, we're going to look at chapters 4, 5, and 6. So it's chapter 4, starting with chapter 4, polygonal modeling. Like I said, um, in the class, all chapters will come out in the exam. All right, so what do you need to really focus on in this one here? So... Uh, you need to focus on well this is all introduction stuff no need this is what you need to focus on manipulator gizmo orientation so when I say by world you should know what it means but by local you should know what it means and here's an explanation of what it all means so given a picture uh, I should be able to uh, describe what it means when I say the orientation goes by world and what does it mean when you go by local okay uh, from here onwards they're all polygon operations and these are the stuff that you've been doing in the lab even I think even if you don't listen to this video you should be able to know your stuff uh, clearly if you've been doing a lot of Maya modeling yeah but to help you with things i'll just kind of talk a bit about this thing beveling is quite important um so focus on beveling i know some of you don't do beveling even though you know it's i kind of encourage it encourage you to do it during the piano modeling but yeah beveling is what you need to focus on what else let's see now um uh hold on insert edge loop we've been doing this a lot um why do you insert an edge loop so you need to know that as well um remember this guy welding when you use the welding tool in maya so pay close attention to this one some of you also don't do this um, in your modeling works or maybe have never tried it before but if you've been exploring Maya you should know that and if you've been looking at what I do in the lab and how I model things welding is one of the biggest tools and pay close attention to this because I'm going to ask you about this in particular and Let's see. Uh, this one relates to beveling. Why you want to have soft edges and why is it useful? Why is it important? What's the benefits of making your edges soft? Um, and when I say soft edges, it's not this one here. This is soft selection. So you need to really understand that as well. And therefore, I'll cover this one as well soft selection what is soft selection and some of you some of you kind of uh, encountered this accidentally by pressing B in Maya while using Maya so know what soft selection is and what soft edges are so focus on those two particular slides and just to note chapter 4 is actually when you look at it all of this they're all like things that you would do when you're touching a 3d software like Maya so if we've been doing a lot of modeling this should be okay and with that said it will also come out in the essay questions in section C when you're describing about how you go about to model something okay so that's enough with, for ch with chapter 4 I'm gonna close that one uh, let's focus here in chapter 5 professional modeling practices right um hold on now what do you need to focus on in this one here uh well i think what you need to focus is this particular slide here polygon count and topology well basically it's uh what clean modeling is all about so focus on this one like if I ask what is clean modeling don't say like you know uh, I don't know 
throwing away your garbage after you've done modeling that's not clean modeling so know and, and understand what what it's all about when i say clean modeling which is polygon car and topology and being able to describe all this is what i seek from you next we have this one here offline rendering and real-time rendering what are the differences how they're different which markets uh, they fall into specifically um, yeah and also uh, and this relates to polygon count so just cover all this polygon count stuff here Uh, why 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 do you do you want to lessen the polygon counts for instance like you know there's an explanation of that somewhere here um, which is here yeah why do we count polygons why you want to minimize or lessen the number of polygons um, and also when we talk about the second part of clean modeling which is topology why do you do why do you need good topology and what does it mean by good topology and it's all this stuff uh, here hold on yeah this one you know what it's all about uh, hold on let me just all right so so you know, when we talk about topology, how do you get good topology? One of them is by redirecting your polygons, and number two is keeping everything in quads. But I don't want a list like how do you make sure your topology is correct. I want you to really understand what these are. So focus on these two slides here. You know what it means by redirecting and keeping uh, your polygons quads. Why do you need to do such a thing? Yeah, so. Um. Mm, yeah, and that's pretty much it, I guess, for chapter five. And also, all this stuff here, you've been doing it in the lab, and that means if you've been doing it in the lab, it will come out in section C in the essay questions. All right. So pay close attention to chapter four and five. So I'm gonna close this one. Uh, let's look at the next chapter, which is shading and texturing. So with this one here, let me see what you need to focus on. <laughs> All right, so this is chapter six, yeah. Okay, let me see. All right, um, right. All this, no, no. All this won't come in, so don't worry about this section. Uh, this A, you know, this the fine art of seeing and dissecting that one. I'm not gonna ask about it, all this. This is all just introduction, just to get you into the whole idea of materials and textures. Uh, what I want you to focus on is this one, the second part, which is all about shaders, shading surfaces. Right. So pay close attention to this one here. And as we go deeper into this chapter. Uh, I talk about the Fresnel effect. What is the Fresnel effect? Hmm? So the Fresnel effect um, is basically the observation that the amount of light you see reflected from a surface means that uh, you know all this reflection happens depending on which viewing angle you're looking at. So you can see reflections of buildings because you know you are at a certain viewing angle and where does it happen it happens on walls it happens on you know windows it happens uh, on uh, surfaces of a body of water like a pool for instance so at a glancing angle you're able to see much more reflections and specularity uh, and not so much if you were to look at it from straight on ahead like you know from here or from here yeah so pay close attention and you know i'm gonna ask about the fresnel effect um and then we talk about 
this part part C and it's all about designing and assigning textures and there's seven common mapping techniques I don't actually I will not actually say list out the most seven the seven most common I'm not gonna ask something like that but what I want you to do is I want you to go to each one of this and you should be able to differentiate from one to the next and describe how each one of them are used in modeling like you know if you use specular mapping why is it useful what is it for for instance uh, like if you go to uh, what transparency mapping why do you need it what kind of uh, things uh, useful for that perhaps you know stained glass effect yeah uh, or maybe you want to do things like hair or grass you know a row of grass so that's what transparency mapping is useful for so go through all this texture mapping techniques and understand what they are as well as this one here about uh, bump maps displacement maps and also its close cousin which are normal maps okay so pay close attention to that and that's about it is it um let me see um yeah that is about it oh oh i forgot one thing and that is actually um let me just yeah remember there's this further reading that i put up there in moodle so this is um a whole chapter from the book designing and assigning textures from the book um, computer modeling I'm not uh, yeah anyway um, so these are the stuff that I covered in the slides but then we go into the whole thing about uh, UV unwrapping and how you do projections and all that using projections you've been doing this planar you know cylindrical and all that I'm not gonna ask about all that I mean that's a good exposure and you've been doing it but then we have new things which is called so you you, you can use implicit UV coordinates or uh, you can use projections and then you have this thing which is let me just zoom in Ta -da, adopting p -text. So focus on this one a bit more. Understand what is PTEX. How is it useful? Uh, how is it different, for instance? Yeah? So pay close attention to this one here. So what is PTEX? And whatnot, yeah? All right, uh, let me just check and see. I think that's about it. All right, and that concludes the revision for our second video here. I'll stop here and go into the next one, which is uh, for the remaining chapters. See you in the next one. Bye.